Okay, again, good morning. I'm Jim Moriarty, consultant with the Bureau of Special Education, and the co-lead with my colleague Mike Tavernier on our state systemic improvement plan. As I was thinking about what to say this morning to kind of get started, the numbers 94142 popped into my head. I have no idea where that came from. And it was incredibly ironic that Margie would mention that this morning as well. Uh, because when I think of 94142, it immediately took me back to my grad program in special education and my very early days in this field. Um, and I won't do the math on how many years ago that was. And in running into people that I've known for a long time, it's scary to think how long I've been in this business. Uh, but I suspect that there are many of you who, in thinking about 94, 142, take you back to a place that puts you in this work for decades. Um, and we always recognize the newer among us with directors that are just starting out. Uh, but I'd like to thank the people and recognize those of you that probably for four or more decades um, have devoted your work, your time, and your energy to the area of improving education for students with disabilities. So for those of you that have been at this work for that period of time, I say thank you, and we appreciate all the work that you've done and the fact that you're still with us after all that time. I hope that what you'll see in what I have to say over the next 15 or so minutes will be part of a theme that was set by Commissioner Wenzel when she spoke, that was reinforced by Margie's talk, and the fact that over the course of the last three years in the Bureau, uh, through a federal mandate, we've been in the development process of what's called the State Systemic Improvement Plan, and our focus here in Connecticut, which is improving the reading of students with disabilities Early in the early literacy world um, as measured by the performance of our students in third grade. Again, just to kind of put things in context, um, I know you've seen me and heard me speak, this is for the third year in a row, but I think it's important to kind of remember where this work really comes from. Our state systemic improvement plan is in fact indicator 17 of the state performance plan and annual performance report that we as a state, along with all other states, submit to the federal government annually. Um, to suggest that it's yet another indicator is a bit of a misnomer. Um, it is a very large and comprehensive effort. Um, in fact, we do report that separately to OSEP each year, um, in addition to the other 16 indicators. Um, I bring your attention to our state website where the information relative to our ESSIP is located. Uh, we're in the development process of revising our website at the State Department. Uh, we know and understand as well as you do that it may not be the most user-friendly site currently. Um, and as I say, we're in the process of uh, revising that. And certainly we'd suggest that you refer there um, regularly, particularly as it relates to information regarding the ESSIP and the resources related to early literacy that we'll be posting there as well. Uh, as I said, this is actually the third year of this process. Two years ago, um, we submitted phase one to OSEP for their approval, which looked at these five components. Um, for those of you that were here last year, you heard the presentation by Dan, Diane Murphy in our performance office, who went through the extensive data analysis that we use that Brent brought us to our state identified measurable result for students with disabilities, our CIMR. Um, last year, um, or earlier this year rather, these were the components that we submitted to OSEP for their approval as we move forward with the ongoing development of our ESSIP. And in fact, in our first year of piloting this work in a handful of districts around the state, and for those of you that worked with us in our first year, uh, we thank you. We certainly use that experience not only as a means of rolling out this work of improving the performance of students with disabilities in the area of reading, but to also inform our work moving forward and to make some adjustments to where we see things going as we continue the work over the course of the next few years. Because of the fact that um, 
with a new state assessment, um, with some reversions in our accountability at the State Department, we did revise our state identified measure to reflect the fact that we're using the English Language Arts Performance Index that's derived from the SBAC testing that's administered each year. Uh, those of you that are directors uh, know now that uh, district annual performance reports now live on the website at EdSight. Um, that's where you can find that information. Um, and in addition to the fact that that information is now posted in a, a somewhat different location, I also wanted to bring your attention to the fact that on those annual performance reports for all districts, that similar information is being provided as a data point there. So here what you have is a sample, sample annual performance report which indicates the English language performance for students in third grade as being 40.0. So that is information that's being publicly reported and available for viewing for anyone who checks out that piece of information. Um, as we look at the identification of districts that will participate in our phase three uh, intervention level for our, uh, our SIP, these are the pieces of information that we use in making those determinations. Um, as you know, we've kind of divided the state into thirds, um, and we review a third of the state's information in a variety of ways um, every three years. Um, that's the same uh, segment of the state that we're using as we review data as it relates to the performance of third graders with disabilities in the area of literacy, again, the ELA performance index. We look at that factor against the performance of um, all students and consider that gap as part of the consideration. And we also look at these additional factors in terms of identifying those groups that move from you know, everyone to what we're calling tier two. And then at tier two, we've instituted a new process for making some decisions that result in those districts that we work on, work with on the ground, in person, at that intensive level of intervention. What we're in the process of doing right now is revising the literacy evaluation tool. Uh, that's a tool that was developed through some of our state personnel development grant work historically. Um, we've looked at the components of that tool, um, have revised that as the means that we'll be asking you to use to report to us on what's going on in your district relative to literacy and specifically how that relates to our students with disabilities. Um, we'll continue the vetting process of this tool, and it will actually have two purposes moving forward. It's the tool that we'll use once we've identified those Tier 2 districts to make decisions about who will be identified for Tier 3, our most intensive districts. And we'll also make that available to you as your own kind of self-assessment tool to be able to look at what's going on within your own district to provide you the opportunity to do some of the internal work that you may want to do to improve the performance of your students with disabilities if you're concerned about where they're performing relative to their non-disabled peers. And that also provides you an opportunity to, if you're interested, to, so to speak, get your house in order when it's your turn to go through the review process if you're interested in not necessarily being identified as a tier three district. Um, and these are the components of the literacy evaluation tool that we'll be reviewing as a part of that process. Um, again, once we've completed that vetting process, we'll make that available to all of you, again, if that's something that you're interested in doing for your own self-assessment purposes. Um, and I do want to identify the piece here, and Margie had mentioned it, certainly it was the theme as we talked last year in terms of parent engagement. When we talk parent engagement relative to the ESSIP, we're really talking specifically about the area of literacy, and really what districts are doing or what they need to do in terms of reaching out to families for a couple of purposes. One, to help parents understand who their child is as a learner related to literacy. And number two, what parents can do to support their child as a learner in the area of literacy. 
So when we say parent engagement here, we're not necessarily talking the large umbrella of how we interact with parents, how we engage with them in the PPT process necessarily, not suggesting that that's not important, but that's not the specific focus when we talk about parent engagement related to our SN efforts. Um, somehow here my slide went a little out of whack with the dates here. All of the, all of the dates should be on the right hand column. Um, but this just kind of gives you an idea of where we are moving forward in terms of timeline. Um, our review of data, again those English language arts, um, Profile scores will be reviewing in the month of December, I'm sorry, November, at which point we'll be identifying tier two districts and being in touch with you um, to provide you the information about that next step in the process, again, which will involve the completion of the literacy evaluation tool and the return of that to us. We suspect and we hope that that will be happening um, prior to the end of the year, end of November, potentially the beginning of December. Um, we hope to be able to identify and contact districts that will be identified for that intensive tier three work in the month of December. We'll be working in districts in the winter and spring of 2017. Can't believe we're already talking about that number. Um, and then as a part of that process, which will be really looking at what's going on in the district, looking at some systemic kinds of things, that may be attributing to um, where your students are performing and some improvement planning over the course of that winter spring that will then be followed up the following year with professional learning and technical assistance activities that we will customize based on the work that we're doing in district in terms of identifying what those specific areas of need may be. As we look at developing district plans, these are the five components that, um, one, two, six components uh, that we've included in our ESSET uh, document. Uh, the four in red are those that we're focusing on specifically. Um, I'm sorry, the, those in blue are the ones that we're focusing on specifically. And I think what you'll see in these three blue areas is exactly what Margie had talked about earlier on. What we're really looking at specifically, and certainly some of the work that we've done in districts over the course of the last year helped us to sort of move more, in a more focused way to these three particular areas because these were the things that seemed to stand out most significantly. Certainly as we look at that process of data analysis, that includes things like the kinds of assessments that are being used, and the information that's being derived from those assessments. And potentially in some instances, it may be getting rid of some, replacing some, and being a little bit more strategic perhaps in terms of what that uh, assessment process looks at, looks like both from the universal screening stage down to that kind of diagnostic work that Margie was talking about. Uh, certainly we understand, um, and that was kind of the piece that was underscored both in Dr. Rodriguez, remarks in Commissioner Wetzel's remarks is that this is not work that we can do alone. Um, that this is work that's bigger than special education. And certainly as we look at RTI or SRBI, we know that that lives outside of special education. So part of this work, and, and it's, it's been advantageous for those of us at the department with the latest reorganization, that we are working side by side with our colleagues in the areas of academics, in turnaround, in talent, um, but we know that that's what needs to happen on the district level as well as we look at the contributors to where our students are performing in the way of reading that in some instances may begin with looking at what's going on in tier one. So looking at the whole process of SRBI as one of the key components. Um, and then the third one, I think is really what Margie talked about in terms of you know, the alternative to one size fits all, of being able to be very prescriptive as a result of all of the evaluation information that's been reviewed in the development of student-specific plans. And, and certainly on the other piece that goes along with that, the ability to progress monitor what's going on for the purpose of changing, adjusting, modifying whatever the interventions are in the interest of student progress. 
Coming up to our submission in April of next year, these are the, the final two components that we'll be reporting on. Um, and when we talk about the evaluation as it relates to the asset, we're looking at a couple of things. Certainly we're looking at reporting results, um, and just as a function of the kind of plan that this is, um, and the, the sense of needing some sort of um, equal footing across states, um, our ultimate measure that we'll be reporting related to the SIP is in fact uh, derived from our state assessment, the SNAP. But one of the things that we heard very clearly in the development of our plan with the input of stakeholders, many of whom are in this room, was the idea of looking at multiple measures of um, identifying progress. So that will certainly be a part of each district's plan, who's developing a plan, but we'll also be looking again through the LAT, the literacy evaluation tool, of what kinds of progress monitoring districts have in place on their own that they'll be able to use to report progress as it relates to the performance of students in reading um, at the third grade level. Um, when we talk about evaluation, we're also talking about something that Margie referenced as well, and that's really the fidelity of whatever implementation is planned to go on. So that we're really looking at multiple levels of evaluation, that it's simply not the numbers piece of things, but being able to say, if in fact we've developed a plan, if in fact we've adopted this approach to address where we are with regard to the performance of our students with disabilities in the area of reading, are we in fact holding to what we said we would do, and are we doing it according to the plan that we developed in the first place? Um, so that's you know, ongoing work for us, but that certainly will be a part of the work that we're doing in districts as well. Uh, I provide you here some contact information. Uh, we'll continue to gener uh, distribute information through our Bureau Bulletin. As I say, we are in the process of developing a resource library that will be available on the website. Um, one of the breakout uh, sessions this afternoon, my colleague Joanne White and I from the academic office will be talking about some of the resources that are already available in place. Uh, we look forward to our continued work with all of you, your cooperation in this incredible effort um, that really can mean nothing but good for our students. Um, we thank you for all that you've done to bring us to this point. Look forward to the ongoing work, and thank you very much for that.